Hello, welcome to Between Two Bridges. Uh, this is brought to you by Green State Credit Union. Uh, this is the drawing room. I'm Eric Norton. I'm Shale Sage. And we're just going to kind of uh, take you through what we do here. And uh, we're going to kind of demystify cigars for you a little bit. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in the community who, uh, you know, maybe a little intimidated by cigars. And we kind of want to rectify that, you know, cigars should be for everybody. Um, so we're going to kind of tell you what to look through and uh, when you come into a cigar shop and then teach you how to cut, light and smoke your cigar. Um, so you walk into a cigar shop, greeted by all this selection. Um, there's a few things that you really have to take into consideration. Um, you know, what you're drinking uh, while you're smoking, uh, the amount of time in which you're going to be smoking, uh, and then just your general taste preferences, yeah. right? Yep, yeah, correct. So, I mean, first thing you, like Chael said, you talk about how long you're going to smoke. So that's where the Vitola comes into play. And so the Vitola is the, the shape and the size of the cigar. Uh, a lot of times when you look at a cigar, you'll see different sizes, and these are usually broken down uh, by length and ring gauge and uh, length can range anywhere from from three inches to seven inches or eight inches depending on how long the cigar you want and then the ring gauge is broken down into 60 fourths of an inch so if you're looking at a 52 uh, ring gauge cigar it's 52 60 fourths of an inch and that tells you your diameter of your cigar yeah so uh so you know how long you want to smoke so you can kind of you kind of kind of judge based off of what you see. Obviously, you know you have a a long cigar like this. You know you're looking at you know roughly an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how fast you're smoking. This cigar is going to take a lot longer than say the cigar that I'm going to smoke today, which is the Hemingway Short Story. Uh, obviously, this is going to take me you know 25 to 30 minutes. Um, the other thing to take into consideration is just what the cigar is uh, made of. Um, different types of tobacco will have different flavors. Um, we kind of separate it out into like two main categories for the most part, um, mainly like uh, Maduro and uh, natural or Habano. Um, and you can kind of tell just by looking at a cigar, um, at least get a general idea of what kind of leaf it is. The darker ones are going to be a Maduro. So if we look at these two, this would be a Maduro wrapper. And then this one, the lighter colored one, would be a natural lab, uh, wrapper. Now, you're not, not all the wrappers are going to taste the same. Um, but in general, you can think of uh, Maduro wrappers as being a little bit more robust. Um, having a slightly more oily texture to them, um, and think more of like a, like a, a dark cocoa, possibly, or like a dark coffee. Uh, whereas a natural, I get more personally like baking spices out of. So think like cinnamon, clove, uh, yeah, something, some, but also like a little lighter in yeah, body. Some naturals you'll run into nuttiness kind of flavor, mm -hmm. a little cream. So the four main tobaccos that you'll run into for a wrapper, the, the cigar is made up, it's composed mainly, you have fillers, like long leaf fillers that are hold, that you bunch those up and you wrap them around with a binder, and then you finish off the cigar with a wrapper. And typical wrappers that you'll run into is a, a Connecticut or a Shade, which is natural. Uh, the Habano, <clears throat> that's kind of a, a medium plant. And then you can run into uh, multiple, like uh, you have Cameroon wrappers, they're from Africa, you have Sumatra from Indonesia, uh, and then we have Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro, and those are actually from the Connecticut River Valley, along with uh, Pennsylvania and, and multiple others. So you can have a lot of different components with the cigar. You can have different regions, um, anywhere from uh, Ecuador to Honduras to Nicaragua, um, and that can uh, those different regions are present throughout the cigar, throughout the filler, throughout the binder, and throughout the, the wrapper itself. So that's one of the reasons you know, there are so many different cigars, because you can have so many different combinations of tobaccos with the different types and regions. But absolutely do not let that 
uh, get in your way of just trying as many cigars as you can. I think that's the the main thing that you need to take from this. You know, it can be made with so many different uh, types of uh, leaf and processes, but at the end of the day, you're not going to figure out what you're going to like until you just dig in and try it. Mm -hmm. um, here at the drawing room, we kind of uh, pride ourselves on you know not having any cigar in house that we wouldn't smoke ourselves. Um, you know, we definitely we stand by all the cigars that we bring in, and um, we think that you know, no matter what your taste preference is, you're, you're probably going to enjoy that cigar nonetheless, even if it's not you know your top 100 cigar. Yeah. Um, but uh, moving on, so you've you know gone through your like I want to you know for me. I want a kind of like a more robust smoke, but maybe like a, a little lighter and creamier. Um, but I also want it to be a short smoke. So I chose the Arturo Fuentes uh, Hemingway short story. Yeah, and here I have, uh, I want something a little longer, a little fuller in taste. Uh, this is a Mexican San Andreas wrapper. It's a uh, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, blended by Steve Saka. It's a Sin Compromiso number five Parejo. So another, uh, another thing looking at when you select a cigar, you have different shapes. So a Parejo is more of your, it's the straight body cigar. And whereas Shale here has a Figurado where it takes a little more, I think, talent, I guess, or more time to roll because you don't, it's not necessarily straight. This one's tapered. And then you have the uh, the Perfecto style. We have the the part at the end, the smaller, the smaller taper. Yeah, so you basically have two ends that you have to roll uniquely as opposed to just one. Um, and one thing that you'll notice is that a lot of the cigars uh, look the same, and some of them might actually be branded the same, um, but they'll be in different sizes. Uh, and the reason for that is that the way that the cigar is rolled and the size of the cigar will actually affect the, the flavor of the cigar. Um, so, like, for example, um, you could look at a Lancero, which is a very long but skinny cigar. I personally tend to find that these burn uh, a little bit hotter and a little bit more intensely. Um, and I feel like the, the flavor definitely comes through with that. Um, so it, again, it's really just personal preferences. I know um, Eric's uh, favorite size is uh, uh, six by six 48. by 48. Yeah. 48. Um, so, uh, you know, you just kind of have to experiment and see what your favorite sizes are. Right. So, so then once you've selected a cigar, the next thing you have to do is, is you cut the cigar and there are a lot of different options for cutting your cigar. Uh, you can have, I have here, I have a punch, like 11 millimeter punch. You typically use these on Parejos and you can use them, uh, usually on, uh, flat cap cigars. So when you look at a cigar, you have, this is the body, you have the foot, and then you have the cap, and then you have the, the shoulder here. And when you're cutting a cigar, you want to make sure you see where the cap is and don't cut into that because then your cigar starts to unravel and it, it kind of takes away from the cigar smoking experience. So we have a punch here, and then we have a, a V cut. And what this does is it, it creates a little V and the main, the main purpose of actually cutting a cigar is to control the flow and the draw of the cigar. And so a punch, depending on the size of the punch, might cut down on the flow, but it'll help actually bring in the like target, I guess, funnel the smoke. And the V cut kind of does the same thing. You can cut it and it'll um, give you a little more surface area. So it'll draw that through and um, kind of tunnel the cigar, funnel the cigar flavors into, the, into your mouth. V cuts definitely draw really nicely. Um, punches you can only use on certain cigars, but I feel like punches definitely kind of like intensify that flavor because you're getting the smoke throughout a much smaller hole than you would mm -hmm. if you were using a V cut. Or what I'm going to do, which is a guillotine cut. Um, there's a lot of different options. Uh, the two I've got right here would just be a pair of scissors, and you know. We've got all these, you know, expensive accessories, but you know, if you don't want to spend, you know, a ton of money on cigars, you know, they've got. Uh, at the end of the day, you could use like a pair of scissors at home if you wanted to, if you didn't have anything else, or you could use a knife. Uh, you know, if if you're just starting out and you want to learn, 
But uh, I also have the double bladed cutter, which is probably the most common way to cut a cigar. So you basically put the cigar just right in the middle there and clamp down. Yeah, so that's called a straight cut. And when you cut the cigar, whether you're using a V cut or a straight cut, you want to do kind of a swift, quick cut. Make sure it's lined up right, where you're not going to cut into the cap, and then just clip it quick. Yep, so you can see there, just cut off just the very tip. So it's going to draw really nicely, but it's nice and broad from that, uh, from that straight cut for you. So now you've got your cigar cut. Now uh, you got you got to light the cigar. Um, so I'm going to go over kind of like the, the more classic options. Um, first off, old school matches. Great way to light a cigar. Um, a little bit uh, more labor intensive, just because you often have to light multiple matches. Um, but that is a, a, a great way to light a cigar. Um, but uh, one of my favorite ways to light a cigar uh, that we do at the drawing room is called the uh, cedar spill. Uh, and basically what it is is we take these little chunks of wood that are from the, uh, basically the cigar boxes and we light those on fire and then we uh, light the cigar with the stick. And uh, how we do that is we use uh, this really cool old school lighter, bar top lighter uh, that was actually manufactured here in Davenport, Iowa uh, just a quick shout out to uh, Dr. Tom Olson. Um, he's a local dentist in the area. He just brought this in for us. Uh, so this was actually manufactured locally uh, over a hundred years ago and uh, he actually restored it. So I just want us to say thank you for that. So we're just gonna go ahead and light it here real quick. All right, so I got that on fire there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lightly toast it on the outside to start off with. You kind of want to like take the theory of like you want the marshmallow to be toasted evenly across uh, the whole marshmallow. So you just kind of slowly roll it. And then once it starts getting hot, you can start puffing on it. I think that needs a little bit more heat, so I'm just going to let that sit for just another second. Put it out. And there you go. So using the matches or the cedar spill are just really nice, really clean ways to smoke your cigar. Cedar spill, you know, you're definitely going to get some of those aromas that you're going to get from the cigar boxes, which is nice. I just kind of enhances the whole cigar smoking experience, which this is a, a, a leisure hobby, you right. know, so it's it's all about the experience when you're smoking. So soft flames are usually good for indoors, but if you're outdoors and you want to light up a cigar, we have um, torches here. And so the a good thing with the torch is it's windproof and then you can direct the flame. It's a little more targeted. So um, I guess on the side note, we also have little torches here, but these are kind of more of a soft flame torch, uh, tabletop lighter. Uh, and then we have like an actual um, torch that can be uh, actually hazardous to your cigar if you use it in the wrong way. So you want to make sure that we, we have the flame and you gently bring the cigar into the flame. You get a little angle. You want to toast the end and rotate it without singeing the the cigar. So when you're working on this, you want to work on from the outside of the wrapper in. And so you toast the outside and then you kind of work in and, and get the uh, the filler tobaccos lit. And once you get a nice little gray ash on there, you can give it a puff. And then start drawing on the cigar. Yeah, so when you're smoking a cigar, uh, don't inhale. They're not meant to be inhaled. They're just meant to be puffed on. You'll absorb enough uh, nicotine through just like your, your lips and your tongue and your cheeks uh, to where you don't need to inhale. Right. Um, again, this is a, you know supposed to be a very relaxing, leisurely experience. You know, take your time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
feel free to, you know, put your cigar down if you're, you know, feeling a little bit of a nicotine buzz at any, any yeah. point in time and just kind of relax, drink some water, you know, um, it's meant to be enjoyed, meant to be enjoyed over, you know, a long period of time. One thing that I really love about cigars is just kind of like the ritualistic nature uh, of cigars it kind of forces you to slow down and just relax. You have to be there for half hour at least. Yeah, yeah, it's a, definitely a time commitment and you're you're forced to sit down and maybe enjoy some company and and uh, have a drink or two and enjoy the night. I think the, the rule number one is don't tell another person how to smoke their cigar, but we're always here to to help out people and, and give tips. So like certain things is as you're smoking this, you'd like to ash to build up a little bit and that helps keep the, the cherry um, cooled off. And so it kind of burns like evenly. And then uh, it's kind of a balance trying to figure out how long you let that ash grow without ashing on yourself. But that's something that that takes some it practice does. and yeah, everybody yeah. who has smoked a cigar has ashed on themselves. So that's, that's a pretty common deal. And then uh, once you light your cigar, or smoke it down, uh, it doesn't have to be like extinguished. You can just set it on the rest and cigars will extinguish themselves. So um, there's not necessarily a need for that. Um, it's really, um, you sell the tobacco, it will, it'll, it'll go on its own. There's no real risk of lighting the place on fire. Yeah. So uh, that's how to cut, light, and smoke a cigar. Um, what are your hours? Oh, our hours. Um, so uh, right now for the holidays, it's uh, uh, 10 to 6 on Sunday. It is 4 to 8 on Monday. And then Tuesday through Thursday, it is uh, 10 to 8. And then Friday and Saturday are 10 to 10. We ha are you guys good with answering more questions? Sure, okay. absolutely. So this one is from Tony. He wants to know what is the best way to store a cigar if you do not have a what do you call humidor. It? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Um, so the best thing to do would be to uh, keep it in a dark, um, damp environment. Um, ideally, in some sort of like Tupperware container. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to, I'm going to go grab one of the Bovetta packs here. Yeah. Uh, so you want to keep the cigar, the rule is at 70 degrees, at 70% humidity. And that's um, that's just a gauge, an initial gauge. Some people like to keep them at a little less humidity, some people a little higher. Uh, you have to be careful. You don't want to go too far outside the bounds because then you can get mold or you, you can dry out the cigar. So if you go either higher humidity, higher temps, you can you can get mold um, on the cigar or you can get tobacco beetles. If you go too low, then you get cracked cigars and cracked wrappers. Yeah, pretty much between like, uh, uh, like 68 and 72 for temperature and humidity is generally a good spot to be in. So usually just in a basement is usually fine. Um, we do uh, have these uh, humidity packs, which are nice that if they're in a sealed container with the cigars, they will keep it had a pretty consistent humidity for you. Um, and these things are like five or six bucks. And uh, depending on, you know, how airtight your uh, container is, they could last, you know, a year, mm -hmm. year and a half, depending on how big it is. So always a good pick up. That's all I have right now. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to yeah. go over any like lounge etiquette or like what to what to expect from coming into a lounge? Yeah, when you come into a lounge, um, first and foremost, you buy from the lounge. Um, other than that, if you uh, have a locker, if you're a member here, we allow you to bring in your own cigars because you're paying a monthly membership fee. Uh, so if, if you want to bring in your own cigars and smoke, you typically want to pay a cutting fee, you know, su su like support your local brick and mortar um, type idea. So. Uh, other than that, when you come in, uh, it's a place where you respect the other people in the space and uh, you can either keep to yourself or you can, in, you know, engage in conversation. But it's generally like be a good human when you walk into a place like this and and uh, just enjoy the enjoy the spot. You know, we'll be here. Typically, if you go into a shop like this, there'll be a tobacconist or someone that can help you with your selection and make the whole process a little less intimidating. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's it's all about just being respectful and, um, you know, we love 
we'd love to have people of all races, creed, religion come in here and feel comfortable and accepted. Uh, and that's really what the cigars span all across the world. You know, tobacco is kind of a, a universal thing yeah. anymore. Um, you know, some sort of nicotine is, is consumed kind of all across the world, just like alcohol is. Yeah. So, you know, it's something that we can all share in and all be a part of and all be, a, you know, be a, be an aspect of the community. With. Yeah. So and that's really, I think, part of what we're about. Is, yeah, right. You know, we really want to help grow the cigar community uh, in our local area. Yeah. So. Uh, Lori wants to know: Are the torch lighters for sale? The one that you use. Yes, yeah, so we have we have torch lighters here for sale. We also have some soft flame options as well. Can you maybe talk about like your membership? For yeah, me? yeah, sure. We have two styles of memberships. We have a locker membership and we have a, a lounge access membership. Uh, the locker membership runs 150 a month, and with that, you get $50 back in cigar credits. You get 24/7 lounge access, and then you get 10% off um, all your purchases, uh, accessories, and cigars, and then an additional 10% off boxes. And uh, the actual discounts go with the lounge access membership as well. The pricing is just a little different because you don't have a locker with the lounge access. You just have 24/7 lounge access, and then 25—that's $65 a month. You get $25 back in cigar credits. Tony's back with another question. <laughs> Sure. What regions of the world do these cigars come from? Sure. Uh, so most of the cigars are going to come from the kind of Central American, Caribbean. Um, so because of the embargo, obviously we're not able to get any cigars from uh, Cuba in. But um, two other pop really popular cigar growing countries are uh, the Dominican Republic and Nicaragua, which mm -hmm. would probably be most of the cigars. Right. We, you you see a lot of lot from uh, Ecuador. You see some mm -hmm. Honduran. We have tobaccos here from Brazil. The uh, Herrera Stelli, um, Brazilian Matafina yeah. wrapper. And uh, so after the uh, after the embargo, and uh, actually a lot of the uh, original Cuban manufacturers actually left and went to Florida and started up their brands again. Um, so a lot of times, a lot of these families, like Padron, for example, were from Cuba, um, but then they, after the embargo, they moved outside and uh, basically created a farm elsewhere. Padron, in particular, is uh, Nicaraguan. So yeah. Now, so. Yeah. Nicaraguan's a large producer of the tobaccos. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to talk about how you got started, either of you? Like, how did you acquire all of this knowledge? And... Yeah, well, I started, so I smoked cigars since I was 18. I'm 46 now, but I started really diving into it in 2014. And then in 2016, I went down to Nicaragua and learned everything from seed to sale at a, at a Drew Estate Cigar Safari. And um, ever since then, I was hooked, and I just started... You know, I initially started out as a Drew Estate fanboy and smoked everything they had. And then I started like branching out into uh, your typical brands. And then a couple of years ago, a friend gave me a, a handful of boutique cigars. And so I started like getting into the, the boutique side and kind of learning about the different blenders and, and uh, styles there. Yeah, and me, I uh, say I, I t tend to enjoy some of the finer things in life. Uh, so a few years ago, I decided to try smoking cigars, and um, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that kind of like ritualistic experience, you know, kind of just shutting off social media for a minute uh, and just, you know, reading a book or listening to an album, just hanging out outside around a fire, uh, just smoking a cigar, just being a really relaxing experience. Uh, and that transitioned into uh, just basically Eric contacting me at some point because I've been his bartender for for a while. Yeah, we and, smoke uh, cigars every now and then. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and that transitioned into uh, this beautiful place here. Yeah, so. yeah, and this started September 1st, and this all happened because uh, Pete Stopulus and Jens Baker you know, reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to be a part of this, and I signed up, and a year later we had a shop open, so. Do you, Brian wants to know, do you have gift cards available for the holidays? Absolutely we do, yep. Come in and let us know the amount that you want. We'll take care of you. 
towards, um, the, towards the beginning, you mentioned um, like when you're selecting your cigar, you know, all the you know the ring gauge and the length, all those kinds of things, and you had mentioned um, thinking about what you're drinking. So are yeah, the pairings, you know, yeah. kind of like wine with yeah. meals. Yeah. yeah, and typically, so. I guess the goal is part of this is just learning and trying different cigars and understanding what you like. But if you like, I know cigars better than I know spirits. So I'll take a drink of my spirit and then I'll pair a cigar with it. And what you typically want to do is match the body of the cigar with the body of the, of the drink. So if it's a red wine, you can do like a Mexican San Andreas or like a Habano sun grown cigars go well with that. And if you're with a bourbon, you can go with a little, like a little meteor cigar or something a little heavier flavor like more of a duro um, yeah. and so there are there are a lot of different options out there and that's part of the fun is is taking a sip of something seeing seeing what you can pair with it yeah and uh for me personally when i when i do pairings i look at either uh uh doing compare comparable or contrasting so if i do something comparable it would be like uh, for example, a cigar that maybe has like notes of like cocoa and coffee paired with like a, a nice porter or a nice stout. Um, or I could go kind of the opposite route. I have a cigar that has, you know, kind of like cocoa, coffee, and then have, uh, we'll just say a, uh, uh, a beer, what, like some, just something like a nice lager or maybe something like, uh, an IPA, and that way, each time you try the cigar or the the beer, it's kind of like your palate gets a little bit of a shock to it because it's not tasting the same things every single time. Uh, so that can also be a fun way to to play around with them. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to come in and I had a you know a beer or a bottle I want to bring in with me, you'd be able to help me pair that with the cigar, and I could yeah start yeah start down that road. Yep. Yeah. yeah, a lot of our staff would be able to help you with that. And, and pairing is, is one of the, in my opinion, one of the funnest part about smoking cigars is, uh, you know, kind of, you know, sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. You can... So far, yeah. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah, right. Yes, that's your cue to wrap. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for having us. Yeah. This has been... Yeah, it's been good. So if you guys, if anybody out there has a craving for a cigar, you know where to stop and we'll help you through your first selection and and uh, enjoy your experience. Yeah. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, send us a message on Facebook or Instagram and we'd be happy to, uh, you know, help you with anything technically or if you were just looking for a gift for somebody, we could absolutely help you out with that as well. So. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you.